back to my channel. My name is Erica and I'm a third year med student. If you've already been watching my videos on my channel, then you know I've been working on a step one video series. And I've talked about everything from what the test is and who takes it to what resources I used when I took step to how I developed my schedule for dedicated period. And today I wanted to talk a little bit more about what I did during each day of dedicated. I know I talked about how I kind of scheduled each day and how I decided how many pages to do and what kind of studying I was going to do, but I really wanted to get down to the details of it and talk about what time I woke up, when I took my breaks, what time I would go to bed, all that kind of stuff, so you have an idea of the amount of energy and time that it really took to prepare for this exam. Honestly, I pretty much have the same schedule for the entirety of dedicated period. I can say there may be like one or two days when I deviated from my typical routine. So the first thing I did was I woke up at five. And so basically what I recommend is trying to stay as similar to your normal schedule as possible. So for instance, during first and second year of med school, I was always a morning person. I woke up at five at the latest six and I went immediately to the gym and then got started studying. So I really didn't want to change any of that. So I did the same thing as a morning person, woke up at five and then I was at the gym by 5.30. And so during the school year, I usually worked out at the gym for almost two hours pretty much every single day, but I knew that during dedicated period that wouldn't be exactly feasible, so I wanted to be flexible with myself and I wanted to set up myself for good expectations that I could really fulfill. So I decided to do at least an hour of exercise every single day, and most days that was the gym. So I would wake up at 5.30 and sometimes I would even wear my gym clothes to bed the night before, so that way all I had to do was get up and then get to the gym. And honestly, that was probably my favorite part of the day, was just waking up and getting some exercise in. I can't even emphasize how much clarity and how much focus that exercise gave me. Another great thing about going to the gym in the morning was that it actually forced my dad to go to the gym with me as well. And so I liked that because not only was I improving my health, I felt like he was improving his health. And I also really enjoyed the conversations that we had in the car on the way to the gym and on the way home from the gym. Um, I just felt like since he had been through it, he's taken medical boards too, he's a practicing physician. I just felt that he really understood the difficulties and the challenges that come with studying for such an important exam. And so it really meant a lot to me to spend some mornings just venting and complaining and he would understand and give me words of advice and encouragement about keep pushing forward and you know keep studying hard if you're doing great. And then other times, you know, just talking about other things completely not related to medicine or to boards or anything, just to try to get my mind off of this test. And so I really enjoyed those mornings because I got to spend a lot of time with my dad and then I got to spend time at the gym. And it was just a really good balance of getting my body going at the gym, exercising, getting ready for a full day of studying, and then also having that social support there from my dad and getting to talk to him about whatever it was. And then when I got home, my mom would be getting ready for work, so I got to talk to her a little bit over my morning tea. And so it was just really nice to have that social support for me there in the morning, starting my day off right with a good positive mindset. So regardless of if you enjoy going to the gym and exercising, I think starting your day with or even having a midday break with some sort of physical movement is extremely important important in helping you to focus and study for such a long period of time. And then again, also that social support, whether it's friends, family, or both, is extremely important because it can be such an isolating time in your life. So like I said, I usually got home around 6.30, chatted with my mom a bit, showered, got kind of like ready and relaxed for a full day of studying, and by 7 o'clock I was always in my study spot. And I had this amazing study spot. My parents, bless their souls, were extremely sweet and they have this huge window in their bedroom. And since they're at work all day long, they were like, you know, you can use our bedroom and you can set up your desk right by the window if you want, like no problem. We're not gonna be home anyways till later in the afternoon. So I took them up on that offer and I set up this little table right in front of this huge window that overlooked our backyard and also this little park that we have in our backyard. So it was really nice to have that natural sunlight coming in and just to be able to look outside because I feel like if I was studying in a room without windows for that long, I'd probably go crazy. So the first thing I would do is my you world questions. So like I talked about in a previous video, I would do two sets of 40 questions each day. So I typically try not to take too much of a break between the question sets, so I do 40 questions in one hour, just like the real exam, and then I take like maybe a couple minutes, and sometimes I wouldn't even take any break at all, and then I jump immediately into the second set of questions. So if I started at seven, I usually finish around nine o'clock. 
From there, I started reviewing the questions. So again, like I talked about in my other videos, which I've linked down below, I would go through in as much detail as possible all my URL questions, going through correct answers, incorrect answers, and then also researching anything I really didn't understand. Um, and so from about nine to 10, I started working on that. And honestly, in that one hour of work, I only would get through 20 questions. I know that's ridiculous, 20 questions in an hour, but to really understand and get through everything in as much detail as I wanted to get through, it really just did take that long. Like I was saying before, I really tried not to change my schedule too much. So because I had been practicing intermittent fasting, I wanted to continue this practice through my dedicated period. So I just changed my eating schedule a little bit so it could correlate a little bit better with my breaks that I would have throughout the day. So my first meal would be around 10 o'clock. And because I meal prepped everything, all I had to do was either heat it up or take it out of the fridge and bam, my meal is ready. And I could take a full 30 minutes to an hour for a break. I started around 10 and then around 10.30 or 11, I would take a full break and I would have my meal. And honestly, like my favorite guilty pleasure thing to do would be to watch the show called My 600 Pound Life. And I know it's like kind of sad and a little bit weird that I watched this show, but I really loved it. I really loved watching um, what bariatric surgery is about and the challenges that these patients face in losing weight and trying to keep it off with the surgery. Um, so I don't know, that's just something I enjoyed watching. And I also watched a decent amount of Botched. Um, and I don't, I honestly don't know why. These shows were just always on at the same time that I'd be taking these breaks. So that's just kind of what I did. Um, but you know, do whatever you want to do, take your dog for a walk, call a friend, um, watch TV, scroll through social media, whatever is going to give you a good break and a mental reset, like do that for your breaks. So anyways, that was my first break of the day and so that would take me to around 10, 30, 11 ish. So from 11 to about 2 or 3, I would continue doing my questions. So again, going through correct and incorrect answers and all that stuff, taking my notes in my binder. And then I wouldn't finish going through those 80 questions until probably close to 3 o'clock. And so by 3 o'clock, that was about time for another break. And at that point, I would have my dinner. So I know it's kind of weird that I had my like breakfast lunch around 10 and then I was having such an early dinner around like 3.30, 4ish, but that's just because I was practicing intermittent fasting and I only ate for a six hour period and that was just kind of the perfect amount of time for a break for me. I couldn't, if I studied any longer, I would just kind of, you know, not be efficient. I wouldn't be able to retain as much as material. And so it just made sense for me to use those breaks for eating and also just to relax. Again, for dinner, I had meal prepped everything, so I got to use that full hour just to relax and to have my meal and do whatever I wanted to do to, you know, relax a little bit. So then after dinner, um, which was usually around like 4 or 4.30, that's when I started to get to my required pages for the day. So like I talked about in my previous video, I found a way to figure out what organ systems I wanted to study for how many days, and then I figured out how many page numbers I'd have to get through for, for first aid. And again, for those details, watch that video that I made, and I'll link it down below. But basically, around that 4:30 period is when I would start doing those quick. Is when I would start doing those questions. Ah, is when I would start doing those page numbers. So I would just read through first aid, and again, I talked about how exactly I studied first aid in my other video. And I would make my note cards on things that either I had never seen before or completely new or just things that I found really difficult to remember. And um, I would do that until pretty much I hit a wall. And that usually happened around like six o'clock. So as the day went on, I could kind of go for shorter blocks of time without like get feeling a little bit burnt out and like needing a break. So like in the morning, I could go for four or five hours without stopping. But in the afternoon, it was like every two hours I needed a break. So usually around like six, or 6.30ish, I would, you know, call a friend, go for a walk, just like scroll through my phone for like 10 minutes, just like something to kind of not study for a second. And then after that short break, I'd go back, right back into it. So going through my first day, patho, lens, sketchy, and just covering what I needed for the day. And then around eight or nine o'clock is when I started really hitting a wall and just saying like, wow, I have studied for a long time today and I'm no longer efficient. I'm no longer retaining new information. This is not serving me. And I'd close my books and I'd say, I'm done. Um, and I would do that at the latest by nine o'clock, no matter what, even if I wasn't feeling super burnt out by nine o'clock, I was done and closed my books. The reason I was able to do that, regardless if I got through all of that day's goals was because I had 
pre-planned a break day or a catch-up day every single week. So like I said in my schedule before, every Saturday was catch-up day. So even if I hadn't gotten through everything, and but I was just feeling like burnt out or inefficient, then I just closed my books and I reminded myself, you know what, this is why I plan for a catch-up day. For days like this, when I can't focus anymore and what I'm doing is not working. So I guilt-free closed my books and I would enjoy the last like hour of my time before I went to bed and just, you know, relax. Talk to my parents, call a friend, go through my social media kind of stuff. Um, I really enjoyed actually making an exercise routine. I don't know why, I really loved um, spending my like relaxed time at the end of the day to just like make up my exercise routine for the following morning. I actually learned quite a bit and like found some new exercises during that period of time. That's just kind of one way and I integrated my hobbies with my break time. So I got to have relaxation, I got to learn something new and exciting about something that I enjoyed. And then by 10 o'clock I was in bed and going to sleep because I would wake up at 5 the next morning. So my schedule is pretty straightforward and pretty much I did the same thing every single day. And honestly, like you would think that I would burn out from that really easily, but I just stayed motivated. I just kept thinking about what was driving me to do well in this exam. And I got through it with very few days of really feeling just burnt out and not motivated enough. And in my next video that I'll record, I will talk all about what kind of things I did to prevent burnout, to continue being motivated, and to push through until my exam day. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my page because I upload new videos every Thursday. And next Thursday, I will specifically be talking about, again, tips for motivation, how to prevent anxiety and stress, and also just some tips about testing, what to expect, and what to wear, what to bring, all that good stuff. So if you're interested in that, please check back next Thursday.